Hey everybody. So my last video, which was a drinking video, um, was one in which I was grieving. I was grieving. And a commenter whose comment I removed because it wasn't empathetic, it was rather um, cruel, uh, commented about how I sounded very traumatized. Yeah, that was a video in which I was expressing my trauma. And uh, he went on. I'm assuming it was a he by the fascination of forced BJs. No, not this girl. I never had to do that. I never wanted to do that to prove myself um, likable. I was one of the most popular girls in school. I am. Um, it was it was common knowledge that the girls who who gave BJ's in high school wanted to be liked. So, I had boyfriends, uh, but that's not what you did with them in high school. Uh, it's television, movies, and my own a writer, as well as. Uh, Cider House Rules and The World According to Garp, they are to blame for this idea that girls want to go on down, down on guys like there's no tomorrow. Those women do exist. You do have these women who need to suck the life force out of you in order to feel alive. Then they will suck the life force out of you. They're sucking the life force out of you when they can't wait to go down on, the, on you and, and, and suck it down. All right? Um, I'm going to give you TMI. Uh, I was married twice and the last time I had a long relationship with a man who was very unstable, so I was not going to marry him. And I've had some hot sex and only once did I swallow because it was in the heat of it and it was with husband number two because I really, really loved him. I loved him. He was funny, he was witty, but he, his cruelty knew no bounds. And when the kids got tired of him being Mr. General, they moved out forever. And I lost my son at age 14. Didn't speak to him for a year on his terms. And then slowly he started coming back to me. And for his birthday party, not his birthday party, but his adulthood birthday party, which is graduation from high school. That's like your birthday party from childhood. And we went to Bald Head Island and he almost died saving people because he was pulled under by a drowning man who he saved on Bald Head Island at the Frying Pan Shoals in. That was intense. I wrote about it. I will say I should do a blog somewhere. Does anybody know where I should do a blog? Should it be on like Substack or WordPress or what? So that my words don't get stolen because I, I wrote something that later I saw almost verbatim in the, in the book, uh, Little Paris Bookshop, which was about a bookshop that was on a, fl a boat that floated and the sky went crazy and um, in a good way, and he he cut the ties and floated down the river and had an adventure. But when he first meets this woman, uh, there is a way he describes the experience, and I'm thinking the editor of that book found my free chapter for my book online because it was so close. So I don't trust online. Whatever you put out there, they keep you know, including this video. I have it, Creative Commons, you know, that way. If anybody wants to take some of it, they can. But okay, so here it goes. Sexual trauma. I had none. I had no sexual trauma. Uh, the boy I loved in high school, he was the one who I chose to be with for the first time. And he wasn't into me. And... The second time we were together, I didn't have sex with him because that's all he wanted. So I broke it off. Okay, so I turned 60 this year 
and I was out in Arizona, and he's a friend of my brother's. If you follow my channel, you know, my brother was out in Tucson, Arizona. My parents are out there. My mother's the pathological narcissist. You know, she had her head trauma from that stroke. Um, you know that the physician said it was because she took four of these. Ding, 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 ding. Well, that's five. But that, that included the flu shot, and that cocktail created um, what the doctor said was blood clots. Now, this is what the doctor said. I didn't. And also, she, uh, the doctor said I, I couldn't come into the uh, practice without wearing a mask. And I said, well, I'd really like to get around that policy, you see, but I, I, I'm not vaccinated. She goes, oh, okay, then you don't have to wear a mask. I was in heaven. So people, you know, thought like I did. That's, that's heaven to me, as well as fruit trees, garden, a cat, a dog, a man who loves you. Uh, but I don't have the man who loves you. And I have cats, I have dogs, but I, I pet sit for them. More information about me. I pet sit. I'm a pet sitter. And... I have a son that's local. We have a very loving relationship. He's the one that didn't speak to me for a year. And it was uh, part of the, the growing up process of a man. And he separated from the mother to forge his path. And he went on to becoming a man when he saved somebody uh, that almost cost him his life. So you see, I am all about the rite of passage for, for young men. And uh, fathers have a great, uh, are, are very important in that boy's life, as well as the daughter's. And so be it known, I was, when I divorced their father, I never meant to divorce him from them. And I didn't. We co-parented. I'm a fucking saint. Isn't that an oxymoron? <laughs> fucking saint. Jumbo shrimp. Social distance. Those are all <laughs> oxymorons, aren't they? Oh my God. Yeah, so I'm starting to get into the world of uh, Rob, uh, the R Russell, um, who wrote the uh, Universal One. Because my favorite co comedian and entertainer and blog uh, podcast, uh, Owen Benjamin Comedy, he, he gave up Christianity finally. Uh, recognizing the Christos, I see it as a man who was exemplary. Uh, and that speaks more of my language, but I've gone, I, I, I can only get so much out of a 40 year old man preaching to 20 and 30 year olds uh, about life. And because, it, because I'm 60 and I have other issues, but I'm very proud of him and his work and, and of the community. I just, you know, have my own thing. I'm healing from a lifetime of abuse. So there we go. Okay, the sexual abuse. I didn't have any, except what happened was when I saw, uh, his name is uh, Cosmic. This is Cosmic, that's his name, uh, for, for our purposes. Um, our first time was nothing to write home about. And the, the betrayal was his sister was home. The other betrayal was his sister told my friend Pam what she heard all about it. And I made, I was making a joke and they were being snide about it. And what I said lovingly to Cosmic when we were finished is I was sitting on the edge of the bed naked. This is good for a book. And I said to him, I guess this means I guess this means I'm not a virgin anymore, doesn't it? That was my way of bonding with him. That was my way of being like you you and I have a special moment. This is when we decided to deflower me. We took precautions sexually for avoidance of um baby. That's private. But uh yeah, and what happens in Tucson this summer of, of uh, was it the summer? No, it was February, sorry. It was this year. It was right after my 60th birthday. 
He's like, Kat, I am so sorry. I'm like, what for? You know, for like being the, the one who took your virginity. I go, well, you know what you did give me? And he felt even worse after I told him that men have sex because they can fuck anything practically. And women have sex for love and emotional connection. So, yeah, he was sorry. And he should have been. But I figured that out. And of course it was a bummer. And of course it should have been a special thing that you bonded. But that wasn't the reality of the times. So somebody I really was into, that I really liked and was attracted to, my body responded to positively, arousal. He deflowered me. Who couldn't have been more perfect? And then I went on to like a sexual experience in my freshman year at the College of Charleston that was positive with a man who I met at the swimming pool. And uh, then I went to the University of Arizona and I had a very positive experience with my first boyfriend. Very positive. So then, you know, when I became a stripper, it was only after I had been used and abused and sexually exploited by the haves in the world of the have-nots. It's in my book. <laughs> there is such a thing. The upper crust of, of the society, upper crust meaning the assholes that, that like corporations run things and their kids go to private schools. We're resources to them. I told him, I told my brother, I go, we're really amazing people. However, online dating, I go, it's not our thing. Because we are who a guy or a gal, like I told him, I was speaking for myself. I think men are really awful online because they're really looking to get ahead. Ha ha ha. Get it? <laughs> On so many different fronts. <laughs> and if I'm not giving, I'm not willing to put out because I want to find out who this person is to have an emotional connection. If I'm not willing to put out, even though I'm not that expensive and I'd like to, I do a lot of free things with people, they're not taking me out whining and dining me. These guys are like two-bit, small-time uh, jack-offs or even like assuming the little amount of money a man would actually spend on me. No man, no man has spent anything over any significant value. Let me guess, how many dinners did the Carlos Snarl do? One, because he invited me and he insisted after our first date was Dutch. Then we did a free thing. Then we did a free thing. Then he invited me to dinner. And then I said, hey, let's do dinner. Yep. So it was like he bought three dinners. <laughs> Big deal, right? Yeah, I just discovered that the, the men online really were forceful with their intimidation tactics to get sex from you as soon as possible. And th it wouldn't be good because as a female at my age, I need to have an emotional connection more than ever because the hormones aren't the same. But these men at the same token and the, but the opposite uh, experience is that because they need to experience testosterone they're going to use you like you're a sex object like you're a walking living um eye candy for them to get aroused by so you have to be you have to become online dating when you even when you meet them you're still being objectified that's why it's it was such an assault that's why it was so toxic that's why it was so awful for me and uh, so this this um, user on YouTube who wrote a remark, which now I regret removing, because I could have given him a learning moment, because in the entire video, that's what he focuses on. Oh, you must have had some trauma around head. No, 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 not at all. Um, my partner got fellatio uh, 
as a reward for being so good at making me have pleasure and come. It's so good at being an unbridled man, a masculine man, loving a woman. He got rewarded, but not in that sort of way, not in that reciprocity sort of way, not in that transactional sort of way, not the way it sounds. The expression does not really do justice to uh, what it is, which is I, when you're married to somebody, and you're after a certain age, and people like Owen Benjamin doesn't know this, um, that man requires special attention to his member. But maybe that's because he watches porn. So I had to do all of that if I wanted to have intercourse. And granted, with my first two, and this is giving you TMI, I always made sure they, and they, so respectfully, you know, the, the men, as, as awful as, as they were, my sex life never suffered. So I have no trauma around it. Never sold my body for sex. I was offered $5,000 for an overnighter. Never did blowjobs for sex. I worked in a uh, peep show, but didn't do the jobs. I was a phone sex expert. I, I talked to men into or orgasming. I talked them into climaxing. Imagine that. Chatty Kathy. I went by the name of Electra with a K before that bitch came out. I didn't even know she existed. And I didn't do it with a C because the Greek uh, tragedy, Electra at morning becomes Electra of the book uh, and the uh, Electra, the, the, um, the sister of the brother whose mother killed the father and then the brother kills the mother and it's just terrible. I didn't want anything to be associated with that. <laughs> oh my God. Oh man. So, um, no trauma there. I, I've always had really good sex, but the last one, that was the trauma. That was the trauma. The last one was the really bad. So Gail, who I uh, don't know, never met, I heard so much shit about you. He used to say how terrible you were. Maybe you were, but maybe it was reactive abuse, which is, in essence, a constructive eviction. Look it up. It's the same thing. Constructive eviction is when you yourself evict yourself from a commercial lease in Virginia because the landlord who owns the building has failed to do things that you rely upon to run your business and were in the agreement in the first place and you've asked them to do things and they haven't done them, and it is a detriment to you. You can then break a lease and it's called constructive eviction. Constructive eviction in Virginia. I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. So, um, yeah, I had to do that. It was hard. I had to use my legal knowledge for a couple of things. I was on my way to becoming a paralegal out in Arizona when my children's father knocked me up. We got married and we moved out to North Carolina and he wouldn't have done it without my blessing. And he is now just a bot, a cog in the wheel, but he's rewarded by the system. And I'm not saying he's a bad person. I'm just saying he never would fulfill me. He never would have fulfilled me on any other level other than we had a fairly decent sex life. And that's what I had with all of my partners. Because that wasn't the issue. Sex is never the problem. It's the day-to-day -day thing. Sex is what you do. But it, it doesn't mean you love a person. Except now that I'm older, I have to have an emotional connection. So you meet these guys, these sex-starved guys online, and they're using you as an object of affection for the erection, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? erection potentiality. And I'm like, I don't want to be with you in that way. It's disgusting to me. I'm turned off. Because that last relationship, that's all it was. And that's who traumatized me. That's who forced me. But nothing down the throat. No, nope. no, he would not take no for an answer. He would break down the door. Uh, he would unlock it. Mm. Yeah. 
And then he became such a drunk, all I had to do was outrun him. And I would, I would outfit rooms with beds. <laughs> I had three beds in that house, finally. And I would just like go to, from bed to bed and, uh, until I, I could, he would pass out in one of them. And I could get a good night's sleep without the sex. So he's the only one that traumatized me. But I live to tell him about it. It's kind of funny. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, absolutely no trauma around sex whatsoever. Other than old men who get all quivery, shake like a fish, like Alanis Morissette sings. You shake like, like a, you shake just like a fish. You treat me like a whatever. <laughs> yeah, you took me out to wine, dine, six to nine me, but didn't hear a damn word I said. Yeah, that's pretty much sums up a relationship with a narcissist. So you can have great sex with them. But uh, anyway, that, that's going all over the place. I hope people's brains can handle this later.